In recent weeks, China and South Korea have both had their new fighter jets grab headlines. They are the Chinese J-35 medium-sized stealth fighter and the Korean KF-21 fighter. So which one is better? Let's do some comparing here. Let me point out the obvious first. 1. The J-35 is a stealth fighter, the KF-21 is not. The J-35 solely relies on Chinese technology, while the KF-21 has technologies from multiple international aviation companies. The J-35 will enter service well before the KF-21, but the Korean will do better in the international market. Now let's go into details. South Korea's KF-21 fighter made its first flight around the time the first good resolution photo of the J-35 surfaced. They look similar in many ways, but there are major differences. We must acknowledge that there is very little information about the J-35, and the Koreans have already stated that the first KF-21 aircraft is not their ultimate goal. Still, we should start the discussion. The first point I have mentioned is stealth capability. The Korean KF-21 is definitely not a stealth fighter. But to be fair, South Korean officials never claim stealth is their goal at this stage. In fact, they call the KF-21 a 4.5-generation fighter, not a fifth generation. Unlike the J-35, the KF-21 lacks such features as an internal weapons bay. All four missiles are exposed, and the exterior has a lot of parts that could generate a strong radar reflection signal. Many antennas and opening covers are not refined to reduce reflection. The J-35 clearly does have stealth features from head to toe. It could be a wise idea that the Koreans don't plan to make KF-21 a stealth fighter. The process would be extremely difficult and expensive and would directly compete with the US F-35 fighter, a move the US will never support. And since the South Korean Air Force already purchased F-35 fighters, there is no point in building another stealth fighter that could end up a failure due to the technological and financial risks. And the Koreans can sell this 4.5 generation fighter to other countries without the pressure of US intervention, because, again, it is not competing with the F-35 directly. For the Chinese, they definitely need a medium-sized stealth fighter to work with the J-20, even if the project is challenging. Now let's have a look at the second point I mentioned. Korean officials insisted that the KF-21 is a domestic technology fighter, but all key components are clearly from abroad, such as the American F-414 engine, the radar, which heavily relies on Israeli Elta and Swedish Saab, and even the canopy. This is actually not a disadvantage because, unlike China, South Korea has few limitations on sourcing technology from the Western world. Therefore, it is better that the Koreans rely on well-established overseas aviation companies in the KF-21 project. On the other hand, in China, a key component presenting major problems is the turbofan engine. It is believed that the J-35 is now equipped with the WS-13E turbofan, a Russian RD-93 Chinese production variant. And in the future, the J-35 might adopt the WS-21 engine. Other than that, the Chinese have achieved self-reliance on airframes, missiles, radar and other avionics. Interestingly, some wind tunnel testing of the KF-21, for example, the missile release tests, was carried out in the US. That spells some trouble in the future. It is debatable if the self-reliance of the Chinese fighter project will give an upper hand in a war or in weapon trade. Overall, it is better to have full control of all components of the project. Compared to this, the greater concern for the Chinese is actually political and diplomatic challenges if they want to sell the J-35 to another country. My opinion is that both China and Korea found the best option to design and build their medium-sized fighters. They are different countries and should approach the problem differently. Thirdly, the J-35 project schedule is well ahead of the KF-21. The KF-21's first flight is about a year later than the J-35, but the Chinese medium-sized fighter has gone through the FC-31 demonstrator and the first-generation fighter prototype development. However, this does not mean the Chinese will always take the lead in the future. The J-35 aims at winning the Chinese Navy contract to become the first Chinese aircraft carrier stealth fighter and the second in the world. That means the J-35 still has a long way to go to be fully tested and start carrier operations. On the other hand, the KF-21 is less advanced but much easier to reach maturity. And as mentioned, the KF-21 has some advantages in the international market. One reason is that not many countries can afford a true stealth fighter with a very high price tag, while a 4.5-generation fighter would be ideal for them. 
Based on how the South Korean tanks and self-propelled howitzers are selling in the Western world, the KF-21 might have a bright future in these countries. A middle power country will not be able to quickly equip its fighter fleet with the F-35, which means the KF-21 will be very appealing for the next two decades. Lastly, I would like to highlight some questions about the two fighters. For the J-35, there is no doubt the goal is a top-class stealth fighter, but there is literally no official information about it. For example, most people believe it has two Chinese domestically designed turbofan engines, but the capability of the engines is unknown. For the KF-21, although the Korean officials never claim it is a true stealth fighter, the media reports seem to be hyping everything excessively. The fact is that the KF-21 we see today will never be able to compete with the J-20 or any other stealth fighter. Because of this, in my opinion, South Korea could be better off aiming at developing a stealth fighter that could first fly in the mid-2030s instead of rushing through a 4.5-generation fighter project in 2020s. By then, the American F-35 project will have reached a mature stage, the US will be selling its sixth-generation fighter and will not object to the Korean offering a lower-end stealth fighter to replace the F-35s that have already flown for 20 years in Western countries. Today, the KF-21 is a quick win, but it is not good for the long-term goal of developing a Korean fighter industry because too many resources are being poured into a fighter that cannot compete with potential Asian opponents, and if the J-35 overcomes political constraints or the Chinese can sell it at a similar price as the Korean, the KF-21 will have great difficulty competing commercially. From here, the two fighters will be going in slightly different directions. The Chinese J-35 will start its aircraft carrier trial in one or two years and enter service in possibly three to four years' as time. The KF-21 will have six aircraft built in the first batch, then very likely to receive a major design change, just like what happened in the J-35 project's early stages. Then the Korean government will decide how many of them and from which design stage they will receive an order. At this stage, the officials indicate 120 KF-21 are expected to be delivered by 2030, a smaller number compared to the current fighter fleet in South Korea. I have no doubt that, no matter what, the KF-21 is a major achievement for South Korea, just like the J-20 and the J-35 for the Chinese. But we should pay attention to the differences between the two, which help us to better understand the complicated matter of how modern fighter jets are developed. Adding to the above, I would like to highlight that it appears South Korea has overtaken Japan to become a real defense industry contender in the Western world. Japan has never secured any major contract to sell weapons to any country. The rise of South Korea in the international arms trade is fascinating and very respectable, even though the KF-21 fighter may not be the best in the region. We can all see that, if a country has the will in the suitable environment, major achievement in defense technology is not impossible. Thank you for watching this video. If you like this video, please subscribe, share and comment. It will really help us developing this channel and bring you more videos about Chinese military news. Thank you.